There's been a lot of political talk about a controversial high-speed train between Milwaukee and Madison, while another form of rail service is flying under the radar. Wisconsin's largest city is on track to get low-speed rail. Contributing producer Fred Wessel found their support, but not everyone is on board in Milwaukee. High-speed rail? For a while, it was headed for Wisconsin, but that plan has been derailed. And yet another kind of rail is coming. Kenosha got it first, and Milwaukee is on track to get it next. Here's a clue. It's something that Kenosha has in common with many cities in Europe, great cities like Florence, Italy. It's not high-speed rail, it's low-speed rail. A few years ago, Kenosha brought back streetcars, long after they had disappeared from every city in Wisconsin that once had them. I really think it's amazing, a town, city of this size, to pull this off and make it work, and our ridership has just gone nothing but up. We're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the return of streetcars to Kenosha. These are 1951 cars. They were as they were built in 1951. And you look at these cars today, you wouldn't think it was 1951. They look like brand new. During the post-World War II years, when these vintage cars were built, streetcar lines were actually disappearing in one U.S. city after another. I think we were in a different time. I think we were in time when sprawl was good, spreading out urban areas was good, when we felt we had unlimited resources, that there was no limit to oil consumption. Many Americans began driving to work in their brand new cars. Transit systems, like buses and streetcars, had to compete for the remaining commuters. And in the end, the bus lines won out. General Motors, Firestone, highway builders basically ganged up and bought up transit systems across the country abandoned the streetcar lines in favor of rubber tired bus. So now, all these years later, why the attention on streetcars? In 1991, Milwaukee was granted nearly $290 million to improve public transit. Special bus lanes were going to be built on the expressways, but this plan fizzled out and $48 million of the federal funds had to be given back. After more years of haggling, most of the remainder was diverted to other transportation projects. But now, after all that, enough money is still left over to build a starter streetcar line. And what you see on this map is you have a solid line that depicts the route that we believe we can build with the $64 million that has been designated for the streetcar. So Milwaukee is, uh, has an opportunity to bring streetcars back after an absence since 1958 when the last streetcars operated. Okay, our initial line is really a starter system. It's intended to provide circulation within the central business district, connecting centers of employment, residential areas. Um, there's the intermodal station that Amtrak operates out of, regional bus operates out of. So we wanted to make that as a, as a definite focal point or end point um, for the streetcar route. In terms of modern streetcar systems, we're gonna have modern low floor cars, fully accessible for disabled. Modern streetcars. Let's hop on board and take a little trip to find out what's so special about them. How do they function in other cities that have had them for many years? What advantages do they offer for efficient mass transit? Our stop is just ahead, and it's got something that looks pretty familiar. Madison. But it's not Madison, Wisconsin. It's Madison's sister city, Freiburg in Germany. Freiburg, like Madison, has a population of around a quarter million. And in addition to bicycles, depends heavily on mass transit. Uh, Freiburg has been heavily bombed in Second World War by the Royal Air Force, and 80% um, of, the, of the medieval city center was rubbled. And the decision in Freiburg has been to rebuild it in the medieval ground plan. And you can imagine in a medieval ground plan there is no much space for modern mass mobility. And so, um, you have to make a choice for means of transport with a high capacity. For a city center, a railway system is always very good and very efficient. Milwaukee's city center is not as compact as Freiburg's. But in Milwaukee, most people travel by car. So the new streetcar line might reduce congestion through better mass transit. But why not simply get more people to ride the bus? We have found through empirical experience 
that people who have choices in their transportation modes, people who have cars in the garage, who have ex access to a motor vehicle, will generally not ride an urban bus. I would ride a streetcar before I rode a bus. People really don't come to Kenosha to go for a bus ride, but they sure come to Kenosha to ride a streetcar. Well, I think streetcars have a certain cachet. If it's about subsidizing something that no one's going to ride, it's not a good idea. If they can prove ridership, it's a wonderful idea. Back in Freiburg, Germany, the VAG, or Der Kehrs AG, manages both streetcar lines and bus lines, totaling over 150 miles in length. And we transport every year around about uh, 73 million persons. When we replace bus lines, former bus lines, with a new streetcar line, the number of uh, customers raises between 20 and 35 percent. And uh, I think this is another good argument for the rail-based system. As opposed to a bus system, an urban rail system presents a self-identifying right-of-way. Fixed guideway, the rail's in the ground, you follow the rail, you know the route. You have to make public transport easy, understandable and convenient. On our stops we have an electronic customer information system where the customers can read when the next streetcar of which line will arrive. We have a streetcar on every line every seven and a half minutes, and in rush hour or more. But in Milwaukee, not everyone is eager to see streetcars reappear. Milwaukee County operates the bus transit system for the entire area, and the county has voiced its opposition on several counts. It could potentially be a, a very big impact to our system. We're concerned about the possibility of competition for funding, uh, if not now, maybe in the future, and the competition for our ridership base. The downtown area in which the city has focused the streetcar on is a heavy ridership uh, corridor for our bus-based mass transit system. So once again, there may be competition, both for dollars and passengers, between these two types of mass transit in Milwaukee, just as there was over half century ago. Unless, of course, people can figure out how the two systems can best work together, as they do in other places, to offer attractive and efficient mass mobility for the benefit of everyone. Once someone accepts the premise that public transit is a public service, then the debate becomes, well, what's the most efficient mode? I mean, ultimately, transportation is about wealth creation. We move people, we move goods in a society, in a modern civilization. The engineering for this low-speed rail project should be wrapped up by this summer. The next step? Final approval to start construction. If all goes according to plan, the rail line could be on the move in Milwaukee as early as 2013.